No, that's fine. I got it over here. We're good. Yeah. Okay, so seven no, o'clock. Thanks. We uh, call the meeting to order. Um, our, our president Jay is not going to be with us tonight. Uh, he's out on um, um, vacation. Recording in progress. Vacations in Europe, I think. I think that's okay. But he's okay. Alaska. He's okay. Alaska. Well, you say not with us. It's Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> it has a yeah. Certain so, ring to it. Yeah, he is. At, um, I believe he's in Alaska. So he. Uh, any explanations of all this stuff? Uh, our chief will be doing tonight. So you'd be talking to him tonight. Okay, you too. <laughs> okay. First thing, a year-end review, fire budget review. Everybody has copies of that fire budget. Is this this? Yeah. No, that was all back. Yeah. Unfortunately, I made the agenda and then I made copies and numbered the pages just so people, if there's questions, we could refer to pages. But I didn't sync them to the agenda. Whatever. In order. Okay. We'll, we'll do that. We have pages. Good. Yes. With numbers. Pages, so. With numbers. Um, I, I think we got one other person just came in. It doesn't have. So on the fire budget, uh, that's going to be um, actually page two. Well, you can look at the first sheet. That's our balance sheet. That's how we finished the year uh, as of June 30th, 2024. Um, basically, 10,000 in uh, donations, contingencies capped at where we, we did not tap it this year, um, this past year. Capital's at 179, and savings is 10,282, and all the money the ambulance makes that's where it gets deposited before we make the splits and transfer it out. And operations checking was 48,000. So we finished four or five thousand change, five thousand three point seven twenty three over budget on the fire side. And that's reflected on the middle of page three. What do you mean? Your budget take care of over? And I'll make you another copy. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we got a spill. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, most of that was in salary, and also we received a credit on workers' comp that came back to us. So between those two, we finished. Um, Which page is that on? Page four. Oh, okay. Where's the bottom of it? Page four. Yeah. Uh, page four. Yeah. Page four. Yeah. Page four. Yeah. Page What happens to uh, over when you have when you spend less and you took in more? What happens to that twenty nine thousand? Does that just roll over to next year? It just rolls over. Okay, so you can just put that in your budget or whatever it is. You're not tied to spending it to anything specific. No. 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 Um, 
there's any particular questions about various line items. What's the capital transfer from capital operating to thirty thousand? I assume that's a payment or something. Yeah. Yeah. Payment on something. And I, and there's a breakdown on the capital side further down. Okay. And you can see the breakdown. Yeah. The one, the one big item that we cost us more last year was on um, computer and software. Um, part of that was, a lot of it was our scheduling software that tied up almost close to $4,000 on program for the years. And then we made some upgrades in our systems, Microsoft Office now, you got rented person, which is a pain for us. So, let's see. I find this a little confusing to read. So that we've got the, on page four, we've got the contributions from the two towns is yeah. the revenue, and then you have the 29,000 in net. Then there's a bunch more revenue, right? There's transfers in, and then you've got this insurance revenue. That's the receipts from ambulance yes. and yeah. insurance payments, which is a lot. So then, so there's, and there's some things that offset that. Right. But then, so the bottom line there is, well, what's this transfer ambulance operator? What's going on there? So basically, um, we transfer money because we only have one check checkbook. Yeah. So when we make the authorization to pay something, no matter where it comes out of the budget, we are physically transferring money to the checking account so we can write the check and the there. So basically, all, all of the transfers we make will be reflected in that to, to cover the bills that come in outside of the money is that are you know, allocated within the budget. So there's capital money that we transfer. So we, if we make when we make a truck payment or we make we buy a piece of capital equipment, okay, that that money is reflected in the capital side, but the check comes out of the operating okay. side. So, so we I have to that. move the money over to cover that expense. So so 123 thousand almost 124 went from these insurance this insurance revenue into the your capital fund. Okay. Got it. And I've been I've been doing this for ten years and sometimes I have trouble figuring out this piece of paper. Getting better. Sometimes it confuses me. Those other numbers you know, on the top that you said for expenses against it, those were the, like next year. We did put one of them into the budget, so you'll see it was in the budget. Uh, last year, paramedic intercepts, um, ambulance billing, and what was the third one? Dispatch? Those, those two. No, uh, it was, I can't remember. It was the third thing. What's that? That those got paid off the top of the ambulance revenue. And then what was left that month got split between capital and contingency. I think it was the but the contingency is funded yeah it's fully right. funded so yeah everything's going right to capital. Into capital. So. how would how would you explain succinctly the difference between the net operating income of twenty nine thousand four hundred versus <laughs> net income of one hundred eighteen thousand? 
where are we talking about those two? Which page? Uh, the net bottom operating the income page is four. on page four, towards the bottom. Yeah. The net income is at the bottom of page five. Because that, that, and I could be wrong, sometimes I wish Janice was here, I could ask her, but that I believe accounts for all the other expenses the money the pluses and the minuses of capital and contingency and pluses in there. capital payments overpayment paying for the paramedics and all of that income what's come in what's going out plus the operating all total ends up at the, where we are at the bottom so which which should we be budgeting for? I mean, twenty nine thousand in the black sounds sounds really good. If we roll it over to the next year, but one hundred eighteen thousand in the red doesn't sound so good. Right? Should we be concerned? Um, I would have to get a clarification on that. Okay. Where do you see the one eighteen? Page five. It's the last page five. I'm the same page five. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But see, this is all capital. Well, there's these a whole all, bunch of other stuff. Yeah. But these are all capital expenses, right, lease payments and stuff, and they come out of the capital. They come out of a different lot. That's why I'm confused yeah, yeah. that it all comes into net income. <coughs> well, I capital think activity it's not. Actually, actually no. you just said it, and I think I believe Capital that's activities and expenses they took out of your capital. Right. Okay, and so they spent either that much out of their capital account, but this is operating. Right. It's, it, it's reflected in the budget, so you see it. So it's, but we don't fund capital as an income at no, the right. top. Right, right, right. So if you, in theory, if you take what we paid in capital and subtract that out, that should come out to roughly twenty nine thousand. Yeah, that's well, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you just did. <laughs> so that's yeah. You know, then that's just for. Well, it's cap capital is part of it. Yeah. But the, the capital activity is minus 217, but the difference between that other income and the net income, I believe, is 29.4. Is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, as you were saying, Albert, I think all this stuff underneath net income, net operating income, sorry, I think all that stuff, if I understand this correctly, is going to go, I haven't done the math, but yeah. that's going to go into the bottom line there. Just a little bit confused about right. what that number means when you put all those different things. It seems like they're, you know, different things all together. And I'm not sure they should be added up for budgeting. For right. Purposes. Yeah. It's always been done that yeah. way. Truthfully, yeah. so you know, be working with what you inherited. Yeah. Eventually, I would like to get to the point that there is a capital budget. Yeah. That we can like, pre-plan like at budget time then next December. Say we anticipate to spend. Two hundred thousand in capital, yeah. and then that would be a plus, and then you would see all our expenses yeah. for trucks and everything, yeah. and then you'd see where we finished at the end of the year on capital. Yeah. You know, right good. now, we don't really have a pot that we put capital money into; it just sits in a bank account, and we transfer the money over and pay the bills. Yeah. Last had an audit. Uh, we actually we just had an audit. Uh, you did probably it's six months late for last year and almost a year. Okay. Um, I meant to ask that question because I wasn't sure. Did we make a copy of that available? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you don't usually do, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we gotta make that copy. So we are up to date on the audits. Figuring out the one for this past fiscal year, if it's not completed now, it was closed. Okay. We'll definitely have an audit yeah. for the past for you folks in the fall. All right. Um, next will be the capital expense update. Uh, well, it looks like the twenty-nine thousand is actually. Uh, net from your operating expenses. Okay. In the capital activity, it's a different pot of money. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So it's confusing that it's it, also it is. to the it same is. bottom line. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. 
Good, good management. Sure. Yeah. So um, the next page, page six, goes over our capital expenses for all of last year. Um, so I know I mentioned to you folks that I was going to go over budget, over my a lot of amount that I could spend without question. And then once it all sugared out, it turned out to be twenty six thousand five hundred fifty two nine which was basically a new laptop coming right there. Um, we had to get a new printer, prior wall and data storage. Uh, our server was gonna fail, it was no longer supported. So we upgraded that, some radios turn out here. And that came out to 26,552.90. And then on rescue pumper, we've spent, Thirty thousand one twenty three seventy two, and then on the striker, which was the auto load, power cots, and defibrillators, um, we spent fifteen thousand six thirty seven fifty six, which will be on page seven, and then our new engine was. Um, Three hundred nineteen thousand eight thirty one eighty three, which three hundred six three fifteen fifty nine was the actual truck payment that we sent wired the money to Toyn, and then the rest was capital stuff that we uh, purchased to outfit the new truck, and we got one or two more pieces of equipment that we have to purchase for that truck that we haven't purchased yet. So that's the breakdown of capital expenses. Oh, the last page, so page nine is the capital fire mutual aid has a capital plan in place now that they started a year ago, I think, or two years ago, to be able to have seed money so that they can upgrade the radio systems for both Ferry City and Montpelier as they dispatch us. And that shows the payments we have to pay approximately, I want to say, five five thousand and change a year. So this might not reflect one of the payments. I'm not sure if this one cut off Calgary or cut off. But so that's the three thousand two hundred forty. So sorry, what is yeah, back to the, the new truck. Yep. So that 306000 where did that come from? Did, did that come out of your capital budget? That plus monies that um, Callis and East Montpelier both contributed. It was a total of 200000 which was a special one time ask for that truck. Uh -huh. And that was split one third, two thirds. Um, and then we put in the difference. I see. Well, we put a chunk of it in into the home for the place. Okay, and then we have a normal payment. So now we have a, our, our monthly payment for that truck moving forward is that amount they receive for the payment, 2,208.62. That's our so fire monthly truck payment. Truck. So fire. What was the total um, for the truck? <coughs> the truck, what was the truck? Give me that 426. 426. Plus the equipment. Yeah, plus we bought equipment. Yeah. Okay, that sums up the capital expenses for last year. <clears throat> well, it's in the budget, but just So the ambulance brought in last year 192 157 
Sounds like it's bad other years. I think it's slowly creeping up a little bit. Well, inflation. It sounds yeah, like I mean, that was like one sixty or something. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to go back. I think it's a numbers thing. Our call numbers are reduced. Uh, I don't think inflation is hit because it's the same. Oh, it's right, yeah, you hold it. On charge. So, can, can you say why the insurance revenue is not is treated as contingency and not part of the the rest of the income that the town pays for? So it's not something you budget for, right. correct? Right. We don't. Why, why is that? I have to say, I don't know. That's the way we, it was set up way back in the beginning, and it was a, it was the mechanism was to fund cap, and that's all the money that we made with the ambulance was to fund cap. And you know, and I've gone back and forth in my own head. I'm thinking, well, should that money go into our operating? Should you know? And, but either way, the money. One way or another, if the money went into yeah. operating, then we'd be asking you for a heck of a lot more for cap expenses. So. Well, that's been a running discussion yeah. ever since ever. Yeah. But. Yeah. It's the money we need to operate is the money we need. You know, like I said, with what hand are we pulling the money out? Your capital funds or your annual budget? You know, we still, you know, because I, I, I think in, in Weird. I feel like the way we're doing it right now, in theory, benefits the town, so it benefits us. Because we're taking the money that we make from the ambulance and investing the capital. And in theory, if we fold tomorrow, all that capital becomes your property. But we kind of foot the bill for it. It's, it's a, well, sorry. yeah, but that. <laughs> How much is it really worth? Yeah. You know. hey, right, well, yeah. But it's something, but yeah. Yeah. Because the other way you would do it is if you put your money ambulance revenue into operating, then you'd have to ask the town, the taxpayers, for the capital items that you buy. Right. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. There's arguments that could be made either way, but we're not going to discuss that. Right. Okay. So the next two pages are and these are fiscal years, so you can kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison by towns. Uh, you look at calls? And calls, yes. Okay. Oh, so we can compare. Just month by month. Yeah. We're not month, sorry. By town, by yeah. type of call, yeah. for a year to date total. Basically, we're pretty consistent. A few more calls this year. Um, Total calls. There's a column under 2022-23 for fire and burn permit. I don't see that. We're no longer doing burn permits. Oh, okay. Who's, who's, doing, doing, who's doing burn permits? Ty is my department. You've got Ty's a firewood. Independent of the fire department. Yeah. Okay. So no ambulances going out to. Well, he, burn areas. well, truthfully, he's always been the firewood. Yeah. But he delegated that job to the, right. the members here right. to do it. Right. And so once once Ty was no longer a member, then we felt, why should we be doing the burn permits when he's the firewood? Right. Right. So we said, we got to reach out to firewood. Yeah. We no longer do. Yeah. So how is he compensated for that? Do we pay him? He is paid. Through the state. Through the state. Right? Through the state, yeah. Okay. So does a call call mean someone gets in a vehicle and goes there? Or What's that? What does a call mean? Does it mean you got a, received a call? Or does it mean someone got in a vehicle and went somewhere? 
it, it's when the tone drops. Every time the tone drops, it's a call. And generally, we run two separate, so they put in an ambulance tone, they put in a fire tone. So it's considered two, two calls. So it's not when somebody gets in the vehicle, it's when you get called. When you get to the answer your question. So yeah. it, you, we can get canceled. I get here, we're canceled. I do the paperwork, canceled, then it's done. It's registered. But it's still a call. But it's still a call. <clears throat> is this unit response, does that mean you responded more than one hour? Those are the, the number of each individual vehicle, how many times they went out for that year. So engine one which is our brand new engine which was barely in service by the end of this year only went out eight, eight calls as an example engine two went to 78 engine four to nine rescue two to 89 tanker six utility 25 ambulance three and four and 197 387 total of 800 vehicles went out. No. 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 Those are calls. No. Calls. Those are all calls. Yes. No, calls, I think, are 776. And then Kari yeah. is looking under um, the unit, 740, unit response total. 741 um, unit responses. Because That's some calls, we respond okay. with the tanker, two engines, and the rescue, and the name. So that's cool. five unit okay. responses for oh, one oh, call. Oh, gotcha. Got it. Can I ask what POV is? The last call oh, at the bottom. I, POV. I almost removed that because it's hard to really track. It's your personal view. So when people go to the scene, okay. sometimes they'll write it on a piece of paper, POV. They went to the scene in their personal view. Should the total unit responses be at least as many as the total number of calls? No, it, it, it could be more, it could be less. Yeah. They don't sync. Like if, right. if the call gets canceled, uh, it's a call, no, but unit, no, no unit, unit response. Yeah. Or you yeah. get one call and we clear everything out, right. and all of a sudden it's Six eight units. unit responses to one call. So there's no way it's going to There's sync. no way to sync them. It's just like, right. we were, we're, I was, I added that to this call because I thought it was good for you folks to see mm -hmm. how many times the trucks are getting out of mine yeah. and what's running. And then, you know, because the, the rescue truck goes out quite a bit. So as it develops wear and it gets more expensive, you can kind of associate the amount of response well. Well, they're using it, obviously. It's going to cost yeah. more versus a truck that sits and doesn't do anything. And then, but I hate to say it, that doesn't hold true with one vehicle to pack. I'm going to talk about that a little later. Boy. Um, so according to this year, unit responses were up 8.5% last year. That seems like a lot. be honest and say I'll, I'll give myself a 10% fudge factor either way on pretty much any number in that spreadsheet. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I constantly find a little mistake somewhere once in a while. Like, oh, darn it, why didn't that call register? And then you fix it. It still it kind of gives you a snapshot. EMS update, Veronica? Sure. Well, you're going to put the camera on. <laughs> I've got 25 people employed at this time, so everyone that works here is per diem. So um, sounds like a lot, but they all have full time jobs and kind of put in where they can. I have six beepers. Beepers are Vermont Emergency 
first responders. First responders. Um, some of those are um, some of our firefighters, and two of them are uh, we just employed them. I have 11 EMTs, six AEMTs, and two paramedics. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that we do train every single month, <clears throat> and I could take hours talking about training, but we train from anywhere from CPR to medical. Um, we had a really good trauma training last week where uh, where Barry came and we used our ATV. Um, we've also done um, a significant amount of training with the uh, met on the mental health because we have a lot of mental health calls that we deal with. Um, this year we handed out COVID tests. We went to the schools. We also implemented a lunch with EMTs at East Montpelier, which I hope to do um, next year. Um, I have taken a- Excuse a, me. Oh, sorry. At East Montpelier, what does that mean? East Montpelier Elementary. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so I went to visit the school one time and they wouldn't let me through. They said the kids were scared of us because of our uniform. Right. I don't have my uniform on, but, um, and so that kind of bothered me yeah. because I don't think kids should be scared of cops or us. So now we started this thing where we'd show up and have lunch mm -hmm. um, with them and talk to them and they got to see that we were real people mm -hmm. and they got excited when the ambulance showed up and not scared. Yeah. So. I remember, if I remember correctly, years ago, the fire department used to go to the elementary school with the turnout gear and, and I think put it on in front of the students. So they could yeah, see they that did that in Yeah. Last yeah. year. You were supposed to do it in East Montpelier something happened. Yeah. 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 It's fire yes. protection. Fire protection week. Fire protection week. We do that. Yeah. Um, I've gotten a couple calls on needles um, in town, which um, I've addressed. I've gone to pick them up, and I can't remember who Rosie had told me to talk to. But oh, okay. That's okay. So when we do get the calls, um, I go over and I, I take care of them. I did want to bring up one financial piece. Um, our paramedic intercepts have doubled. Um, the town of Barrie gave us a month notice and Barrie City gave me a 10 day notice that their paramedic intercepts went from 250 to 500. So um, yeah, and, and there's unfortunately nothing that I can do about it. Um, I've talked to Billy and we worked out a little bit of ways if I talk a little bit about what the paramedics do that we can get a little bit more money. but. Um, that's kind of been a kicker, like not even been able to have a, a board meeting since I got the very city. So other than that, I think I think we're doing really good. Schedule's full and people are showing up for work and doing their jobs and training hard. Any questions? Thank you. I don't like questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me a question. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I think with the paramedic intercepts, what's really pushing that is, and we feel it on our side, from lack of adequate funding from insurance companies. And so the, the real expense of doing this work isn't what we get when we get paid from the insurance company. And so with the paramedics, the real expense of coming and getting all the drugs and different things they need and the time commitment that they get paid per hour doesn't, to 200 bucks, doesn't cover that anymore. It just, you know, so they're, they're operating their paramedics coming to other towns at a loss. So that for them to be able to make money and cover their expenses, they have to raise it up. But, but you don't get that reimbursement from the insurance company. So how many how many of those paramedic intercepts do you have to use? Well, um, as, yeah, yeah, it's on here as an example. Um, I believe. So on the 12? Seth. Yeah. Seth, what was your question? How many, how many paramedic intercepts? Uh, I mean, that's a significant expense. Right. How, how often do you have to use them on a call or how many times per month? Or, well, it's yeah. going to vary on the call, but we bill the insurance company. And so 
it's not a complete wash. No, but you're only getting 200 bucks out of 500 or something. Yeah. And how many times do you have to use a intercept in a month? Or I mean, I know it varies. But this this is a harder one to track because sometimes some some people don't put it in the computer. Oh. So that I can really tell you. I mean, I know there's another place I can look, probably get that number concrete, but I think. We, but you don't take it on every ambulance call. No. No, as an example, the bottom line, mutual aid, Montpelier, Berry City, yeah. Berry Town, those would be more than likely paramedic intercepts. There was a couple times we had Berry City come in and Montpelier for fire calls. But those are definitely mostly paramedic intercepts, but I know that number is low. It's higher than that. Okay. Yes. Albert? Yeah. I, so, so, Seth, if you look under ambulance budget, uh, code number 5899, oh, right. unbudgeted that's right. paramedic. Okay, where is that? That's well, page, 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 Next year, we're going to ask for uh, what's the other thing? Ambulance building. Ambulance building. Five eight nine nine. That's the one on budget paramedic twelve thousand seven seventy five. Yes. 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 And that was at the old rate. Yes. Two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. That's two hundred fifty. That's forty eight calls. Fifty calls. Fifty one calls. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, and just are some of the unbudgeted paramedic um, intercepts included in the medical column and the call summary? It's it's in there as a call. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Except yeah, the exception there again, if our ambulance was busy and we relied on Montpelier to come in to go somewhere on County Road, and they did a, they had to do paramedic interventions, that that would not be reflected. Well, it should be in our call too, in theory. It should, yes, I take that back. Unless it didn't, somebody missed it. Yeah, but the call is in there, but not the expense. Right, right, right. Yes. right. no. Right. Yeah, that's why I was wondering. Generally, the agency that transports the person Yeah. Uh, bills, right? Yes, yes, it is. Right. So, so well, when we get a paramedic, what's that? Did you, did you have a, you pointed to me, did you have a, well, because I was going to make sure I was right in the speak. The organization that transports the patient bills for the patient. Correct. Okay. The problem was what we discovered is if Bonnie doesn't know that we did paramedic interventions on this transport, she will bill it at just an ALS call or BLS call. And if now if we tell her that it's a paramedic intercept call she can bill at the higher rate and we'll recoup some of those expenses but right. we still i don't think we'll recoup all of them okay four gotcha another question oh sorry um i i was wondering because it looked like between 22 23 23 24 it was Roughly consistent, and I was wondering if you've noticed the number of these intercepts increasing, or whether that's been consistent. I don't track those specifically. I think paramedic intercepts are generally increasing. They're increasing a little bit because I hate to say it, if we don't have an AEMT, some more, not to say basic, but some stuff that AEMTs could do that that's all the care they need but if we don't have an AEMT working that day and we just have a B we have to call a medic in to be able to do just that little bit of extra so we're trying to get more AEMTs and or paramedics because there are some of those calls um, from last year that we had paramedics working and we used paramedic skills and we were able to bill at a higher rate, and that money stayed in house. But it's you just never know when you're going to need a paramedic, and do we have one working or not? 
Okay. So, I guess we don't, I know, we're still looking at numbers or? <laughs> Then we can move on to the future of the milk. Right. <laughs> was you mentioned you wanted to talk about a specific vehicle? Well, um, that was my capital, what I call it, capital uh, Okay, I, I don't see that on the agenda. Right here, capital expense. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it should be item six, capital plan update. Is that after the interlocal It's interlocal after interlocal? review of the interlocal. Yeah. Because okay. that one I felt like if we didn't get to, because we got okay. so tied up in the inner local yeah. okay. that I would okay, sure. Sounds good. blow it off the next time. The next time. Just, yeah. just one more question about your yeah. so you so I see Marshfield and Plainfield are your other customers. And do you track the percentage of calls that come from them versus us or something too? Mm -hmm. So do you base your what you build on or what you charge? Two, no, like two, two different three, two different revenue streams. So one is what they charge for the service for to the town, yeah. and the other is calls. Two different. Yeah. So I can't speak to how it was done because those contracts go back, I think, six, eight years now. I see. And, and those were managed by Ty and Toby as president and chief. And so what they use to determine the what they charge them. I really don't know what they most So that really needs to be looked at, actually. Yeah. And, and you need a method per, per population to come up with that's standardized uh, on two towns yeah. or whatever towns. Yeah. That's yeah, let's, track. We're, we're, we're going to look I, at I that. I know you are, yeah. so I think we've talked about it before. Yeah. We're, we're definitely looking at that. Yeah. All right, so I guess you are local, here we come. There you go. So as a board, we reviewed it the other night, and the only thing that, and I know I didn't convey any amount to you while this draft was being written, but um, obviously the dates are gonna get filled in here. I know it was left blank for five, we talked about five years on um, the term of the contract. Uh, and that wasn't plugged in at all. Uh, so we're in support of the five years. Um, and then under on B, under allocations, the, the MFD operating cost capital expenditures. Capital. What, what number are you on? Um, sorry, um, six. Okay, six. And the only thing that we wanted to add in in that on their capital expenditures that um, the repairs to infrastructure or however you want to um, define that, because we feel like some of the more crib like you know we talked about the boiler repair and the well pump. I know that's that's that's. that's not very clear. And so, so what's a capital expense and what's a repair? Right. I mean, that can get tricky. Right. So, and so, I don't know how we're going to define it. Well, hopefully, we can define it, figure out a way so we're all kind of happy. Yeah, you know, I mean, you had a capital plan that showed all the capital items that you could have removed or something like that. Or, I mean, there's, but there are repair items too that. That you pay out of, out of your operating, right? right. So that, that does need to be defined. What the entity is responsible for what, right? So, you know, do, do you guys have a list? A list of what? No oh, capital, what items for this you, that you would pay for this building? No, well, I'm pretty sure we don't have. Do you have a, do you have a fund for it? Well, there is a sure. fund in East Montcoder for yeah. emergency services facility. And I know, talking to um, your old treasurer, what's his name again? Oh, Don, Don Welch. Don Welch. 
and I know they sat down and looked at various things. And, yeah. And truthfully, we, I personally have not put the building capital. It's on a radar, but it's like way out there on my radar. But, you know, I'm more really focusing on the apparatus and the equipment that I need to be able to handle emergencies. Not to say I want the building to fall apart on the top of me, but um, you know, we did we did do painting, we done all various things and maintenance items, but now the building is pushing 15 years old, so things are gonna need attention within the building that you can you could classify it's a repair. Well so I see the importance of this distinction and I wonder if it's something to be outside of the interlocal agreement. If we look at all item six here, the first part is the operating budget, A, B is capital expenditures. And for both of them, it's Callus one third, East Montpelier two thirds. So we can have a discussion outside of the interlocal agreement about repairs and where they go. But regardless, whether it's operating budget or capital expenditures, it's gonna be Callus one third and East Montpelier two thirds. So I, I'm thinking that that's all we need to be thinking about with the interlocal agreement. Does that make sense? No. No? No, it kind of does really because it, what you're saying is the definition basically. Right. Yeah. And we can take that later. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's outside of the interlocal agreement. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, we're agreeing that the capital improvements need to be paid for one through two thirds. Yeah. Like we the operating. Exactly. Yeah. We just haven't defined, but that's something. Yeah. I, I, I believe. Because we got, you know, you, you repair a roof. Is that an operating uh, expense? Well, no. If they, if they go up there, I mean, we know how. I know how. It's like if you stick a shingle in because it fell out, that's a repair. Yeah, if you put all the roof on, that's expenditure. Yeah, it's not that complicated. Re regardless, I mean, it's going no, to go into one category or the yes. other, and it's going yeah. to be one third, two thirds, regardless but, of which yeah. category it's in. Yeah, but what happens is, who's responsible? That's the that's the key, mm -hmm. because a repair they're going to pay for it, mm -hmm. but if it's a capital expense, we're going to pay for it. It's happens. Really, if you need a new roof, yeah. we're not asking you to take that out of your office. But but that's not what it says here. That that's covered somewhere that's else. It's just the timing of when we're going to pay for it. Because <laughs> ultimately exactly. we're going to pay for it. Yeah. Right? Ultimately, yeah. but yeah. it goes in a different bucket. Yeah. Kind of. So. Yeah, I just you know, uh, like I said. We, we took care of those couple of items that we felt were considered capital because they were more of a, yeah. a major repair item. Yeah. You know? and yeah, yeah. Like you the know, pump, You the can well. sit there when the engine blows on a truck, that you're repairing your truck, you put right. a new motor in. Yeah. Well, that's to me, is a capital expense because it's a $15,000 motor. Yeah, well, the and IRS, not, the IRS you know, looks at that too. So, you know, there's ways that you can yeah. define it. Yeah. So, anyway. anyway. I no, no. We used to call an engine a repair, and then they made us, they made us depreciate it as a capital expense. Mm. So, yeah, this ground has been covered before on a lot of different stuff. So, anyway, to your point, we should just probably move on. You know. No, <laughs> no, you don't want to. We're here tonight to fix this interlocal agreement. No, I, I don't for have procrastinating the issue. No, the interlocal we, agreement. We came here to fix it. Yeah, no, what I'm hearing, you guys don't want to fix it. Come on. So if I, give you a bill tonight, if I give you a bill tonight for those two items, are you guys going to pay that? Or are you going to say it's not a, a capital item? That's the problem. Okay. We came here to fix this contract, and you guys are not willing to fix it. Well, that's what I'm hearing. That's not fair. Show me the Come language on. in the interlocal agreement that would fix that. I don't... I don't that's what we want to try to fix tonight, because it does say capital expenses will be paid by by the town for this building. That's right. And we need to fix this language. If you want to fix it, then, then let's not waste our time. So, so if I understand it correctly, we're talking about when does a repair or a partial replacement to a capital item become a capital expenditure versus yeah, an operating right. expense, right? right? There's right. there's some point between a shingle and an entire roof where it becomes a capital. And I would say the way we think about it is, if it's a capital item, you're gonna to come to us with a capital budget 
proposal in December, and then we are going to do whatever we do and then bring it to our voters, and they're going to approve it, and then we're going to pay for that. If it's if it's outside of that, then I, I think it's on you, and that's why we have a contingency if it's something that's just so large that you, you, you couldn't anticipate it. Does that make sense? Uh, how? I think we already have one, right? East Montclair, doesn't they already have a capital expense account for this building? I think so. They do. Yeah. So if we present you with a bill for fixing the furnace, like we did like a $4,000 furnace job, right? 4,000, 5,000? And we present you with the bill, it should come out of that. Well, it doesn't have to go to the voters, just to say. Right. Push back against your town administrator. So we don't know why a bill isn't being paid if we present it to you and we say, look, we this isn't in our budget. This isn't one of our capitals. This is a this is a town capital right. expense. We just have to make sure that we agree on this to capital expense. Well, that uh, I guess and that's, that's it. And, that's it. And I, like I said, if, if it it would be nice if it's somewhere reflected in the paragraph in our local. So we're all clear and we all understand because I just I feel frustrated on my side when I if I think something's capital and then you folks decide it's not and all right. of a sudden it's two against one I lose I got to pay for it and so it, it would be nice to have that clarity that we can decide what falls under what's considered town expenses for repairs if you want to call them repairs to this building that are capital in nature. They are repairs, you know. Um, so I, you know, if we can try and get that resolved, that would be great. I know. I just don't see how you got to put it in here. I guess I'd just like to ask if it's possible to distill the language necessary to make the distinction that Mr. Bradley was talking about between the shingle and the entire roof. Whether it's possible to. Um, clearly define the difference in a paragraph that would cover every hypothetical situation. And if it's not possible, then I'm not sure it would make sense to try to write that paragraph tonight um, and maybe make a decision to do it on a case-by-case -case basis or some other solution. But if someone has language, that would be helpful. One of the other things you can look at is that the bill... Um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So in my opinion, the <clears throat> language is very clear. So the furnace is part of the infrastructure of the building. It's not, uh, it's not something that would be, you know, if you were replacing a, a, a uh, burner out of it, fine. Or if you were replacing a fan motor, but when you have to replace the boiler, which essentially is, is, is my understanding, what had happened, the whole guts had to be removed. No, they, it wasn't the actual whole boiler. It wasn't. It was fire that, that's, the, that's what I mean. Great. So, it's a gray area. It's yeah, always it, going to be great. So, I, I, I think we just got to do it with good will. So. I mean, if you look at number five, I think you guys are in the driver's seat, aren't you? It says that the fire department shall give the select boards an operating budget and also a capital budget, plan for capital expenditures, status report of the capital reserve funds, plan of capital expenditures for the next five years. So I think this interlocal agreement gives you the power to say, okay, this is what our operating budget is going to be, and this is our capital fund. Capital well, our capital plan. fund doesn't have, isn't the capital fund of this building. Your capital fund is is, is no, where it's going to be. Yeah, but that's just what's talking about we can present. But my, my problem is it's when something fails. I got you. That, that, that becomes right. an emergency repair. Uh, it's not something that's in my budget. I, You're not I don't have say, a crystal ball. But I know, I understand. Me. But you said repair, and that's, yeah. that's not a good word. Okay. Expenditure and capital okay. expenditure. Okay. Gotcha. But it is gray, and I don't see any way of getting away from gray. It's, so it's always going to be great. Here's a good example. What happens when the generator system at $25,000 decides to die? And that's going to be a capital fix. It's not going to be a repair. That's capital. Well, that, that makes it pretty simple. Yeah. Okay. You've got to replace it all. Correct. That's capital. So, so now we're looking at a, uh, what's the part that you replace? The 
the word? It was a the firebox. Fire it's part of the firebox. Fire so, yeah. so the firebox is part of the building. Right? Does everybody agree to that? It's part of the boiler. It's part of the boiler. It's part of the boiler. It's part of the building. It, is part of the, it, it, it heats the building. We don't own the fire department, doesn't own the building. You guys own this building. And if you want to heat it, you guys are going to have to fix it. But you're asking us to fix it. With, with basically, because we can't, we, it's not in our budget that you guys have, have, have accepted. We have to take it out of our capital account, which is designated for other purposes. It's never designated to pay for anything to do with this building. We, should, we don't, we don't want to go back 10 years and talk about that. Um, but it, it was never designated, it's never intended to pay for anything to do with this building. We don't own it. That capital funds that we have is strictly for equipment. The equipment to run the emergency services and nothing else. In, in, in order to, if you guys are trying to get it in, yeah, pay for these right, items. Paying for it, it yeah, it, 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 it just, just doesn't work. work. Then you have to worry about it. This is a good example on this four thousand right. dollars because we can't come through with this four thousand dollars. What happens when you come up with a twenty-five or thirty thousand dollar deal? And you're not going to that's not so going to work. Out, is, what if we look at it, expenses over a threshold? Anything over five thousand dollars on one particular item, or four thousand dollars on an item, or, or X amount of dollars, that you, the money would be then the responsibility of the town. That's not a bad idea for the year or something like that. Yeah. Just as a thought. But it, it is, I mean, anything over a certain amount. But we don't own it. Just remember, we don't own this building. You guys own it. And you have a, a capital fund to pay for it. And we don't. All right. So we don't have a capital it's not a bad idea, I mean, really. Because then you do, then you get away from the repair and the capital expense thing. Because you don't really, it's very hard to define that. That's going to be a So if it's over, you know, 2500 bucks or something, whatever, then we'll pay fine. I would like to sleep on it. Okay, you'd like to sleep on it. I've been sleeping on it. Just, I, I know it's, just a, it's just an idea. We don't I know we're not going to have a brighter line tonight. I don't mind it at all. I, know I, know it's 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 I, I don't mind it at all. It's just that um, it's very gray when you start trying to separate repairs from capital expenses. So if we want to do a dollar amount, and I mean, really, you're saying it's our building, we should be paying for the repairs. Really? That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. On the building, any bill that comes into this, uh, it gets presented as part of this building. We're just going to turn it over to you. Mm -hmm. we what if you have a big fight in here? Kick, kick in some small so <laughs> <wheel. laughs> <laughs> I think we should. I think we should do it a dollar amount. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, I. Because you know. There's wear and tear that you guys do, you know, so maybe you should just fix that stuff. But let's just do a dollar amount that we don't have to fight about. Because you're always going to be fighting. Depends who's in there, in the town office. They're going to say, well, I don't think this is a capital expense. And you're going to argue well, that, about it. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you're always going to argue. So it's like, so let's not do that. Whether, whether, like you said, if you come up with a dollar amount. I say that's better. You know, that that would Anything, be a better way to approach it. So I think it's a better idea. I think it's a good idea. Um, Thanks, Albert. Um, I'm so. From my perspective, it looks like there's a there's a couple of couple of different issues. One is interpreting, you know, what that what that threshold is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other one is how to get it when you need it. And so from from the town side, unexpected expenses are are hard unless there is a fund. And so. Uh, I'm wondering if we we need to consider having a separate uh, capital expense fund in your budget relative to facilities that each town is contributing to as part of your budget uh, that then has a threshold for approval um, to to pay out of. So that 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 provides a, a pool of funds that's in your budget that the towns are regularly contributing towards and getting approved on an annual basis um, that that can start to 
build a balance to, to deal with repairs or or improvements to the building um, as and, and then we set and agree in, in an agreement uh, whether it's this one or, or a separate one uh, relative to managing the facility that uh, on, on what that threshold is for approval from both of the towns to you know if it's if, if it's under five thousand dollars then and there's forty thousand dollars that's that's in the account then you can make those decisions but that yeah, is everybody following that, what that, I'm saying there that could sit that could sit within your own budget too because yeah we have an example right. the town of East Montpelier they have various yeah. funds that are in lots of capital yeah. vehicle trucks yeah emergency services this is that sure and so you fund it whatever you think is reasonable based on a you know kind of a Sense I, I hear you, but here's here's a challenge to that. <clears throat> if we both have that fund, and there's a disagreement about what to pay for or what not to pay for, well, there shouldn't be any disagreement. Yeah. If we just said a dollar amount. Yeah, that's I why think, I want to say dollar. Yeah, I, I think I think, I think that's a great idea. Is, Anything you know, over a certain amount, we pay. You know, we could pick that and say, all right. And, and we agree. Because that. I, that's how I use my basis for capital expenses when I when a bill comes in. I look at two things was dollar amount yeah. and um, age, expectancy, normally. So something even though it might be a little lower price-wise, but if it's gonna give me 10 years of service, I consider that a capital expense versus not. And that's how I kind of classify it, based on dollar amount and longevity. And so when there's something that needs an expenditure, uh, roof replaced uh, uh, boiler repair or uh, boiler expenditure then uh, then who actually evaluates what needs to be done get somebody to do it or does it themselves buys the material and so on who, who does that well generally for the, the these these guys Maybe they've yeah. been repairs where right. they just, it breaks. Right. Like, you know, we go to turn on the water and we get no water. Yeah. Like, great. Right. So we call right. yeah. whoever that we can get a hold of that will come out here and look at it. I think last time it was Minash. Well, we will. Yeah. I think well. that's, but see, they're managing it, but I think they have to. Yeah. The, the occupants. I mean, we, we don't have to. I'm not sure that we really took a close look at this landlord tenant relationship when we set up this agreement way back when i mean i'm familiar with landlord tenant relationships where the landlord is responsible for repairs exactly but then the landlord goes out and gets a contractor right, and, right, right, and right, right, controls right. the expenditures right. that way yeah i don't know of a model where the landlord says okay tenant you take care of fixing it and spend what you need to and then bill us yeah well, we can do that we can call you <laughs> no, don't. Yeah, no, I'm not sure we want to get into that. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but it just seems like an odd incentive system. I know, but I mean, it is true that we own the building, but they really control it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I mean, when we need to use this room, we ask them. Mm -hmm. But we own it, so we shouldn't have to ask them. <laughs> right. Tommy. <laughs> so I think, I think this organization always has been very good about making sure that any repairs that are done are done in a forthright manner. Uh, so I don't think that we need to revisit the tenor, tenant landlord relationship. I think that's been bold, quite honestly with you. Um, I think that Seth's idea of having a dollar amount was his actually, or, or who's ever. I, I like that idea. Yeah. And, you know, it, you know we would just continue to do what we've been doing. Yeah, getting a vendor taken care of. That's why, because you guys are here. You, I mean, I must say you have the time, but <laughs> falls within your purview, so to speak, because you're here all the time. And we are not. So, and I think they've done a good job of maintaining the building and looking out for our interests. Actually, so it, to continue on in the same pattern of relationship, I think if we just do the dollar amount. And we've already got a fund. I don't know about Callus. Callus is thinking that we should have another fund that we can here. You don't have to like, or, or we create our own. No, so we, but we, we don't, one. but we could create one. And, and you would, create and one, and then if we set the dollar amount, it's simple. And as we, because 
as the relationship continues, we're not all going to be here. And there's always going to be arguments about capital improvements or repairs. It, that can be an age every every year. We can argue about every bill. And that does not work. It works better to have a dollar amount. It's clear. Clarity is important. I think that's what we need to do. But uh, I understand about emergencies like oh, the well pump goes or the right. boiler goes. But what happens when you need a new roof? Um, then, there needs to be something about that where you, it goes out for well, bid. That, that you get, you get, you get the bids need. for that. It, that we need a what? Well, they, there should be bids for that. So yeah. you need, you, you're, you're going to get, you know, any, uh, any just, big things like that, we've always done well, bids anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty common sense. It's like, that's what we all do in our businesses. But, uh, that would be a big expense and that would be talked about. And yeah. I'm sure you come to us and, and say, I, I think we need a new roof and what do you think? And blah, blah, blah. That's stuff that would be but open to be for that. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. A, a leak, a, a leak to a roof would be a quick fix and yeah. we'd probably cover that ourselves or even yeah. asking for it unless yeah. it was something. But, you know, that would like the apron out, roll, a roof apron out front probably within a few years probably will be on the radar screen to get replaced. And so pavement there, yeah, that would coordinate. You know, maybe it makes more sense if the town's got a project going up. You know, right. Quaker, yeah, yeah, come do the firehouse at the same right. time and mm -hmm. save a little money that way, and then you know figure it out. Uh, but that stuff, hopefully, that stuff's planned. That's not like crap. I need yeah. thirty grand to do the apron tomorrow. Right, you're not going to spring that on us as oh here's the bill. Any <laughs> <laughs> happens. But, okay, so what do, what do we want to do here, just so we can move on? So oh, I, I'm not really a uh, dollar amount. So yeah. I think you mentioned 2,500. I agree on that. I think 2,500, yeah. anything over 2,500, we, uh, yeah, would be a expense that we come to the towns. Doesn't matter to me. Sure. What's Cal's think? That's the yeah. Betsy's spot. I, 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 I think we should have decided tonight. Think it over. We should sleep on our whole yeah. boards on here. I already mentioned I sleep. No, but I want to. Is anybody? We, we can't decide on this tonight. And no, is anybody any taking that's votes right. for the, respectively for the changes? Well, let's just think about that. Sean, I'm fine with it. Rose, Veronica, you take a vote? No, I'm off. really just sitting here taking a nap. Okay, is she <laughs> sleeping on too. <laughs> I turned it. <laughs> okay, so but but, but just to it. inform our discussions, yeah. if, say twenty five hundred, could you give us a list of the last couple three years of items that would fall in this category that have been over twenty five hundred? Just okay, so there haven't sense. been very many. And no, we yeah, did do. Okay, so bad. one thing I want to mention is we had some extra bond money, and we spent that bond money on some of their capital expenses that had gone in the past few years. Yeah. Yes. But that money's gone. The bond money. So that, that was in these bond few years ago. Okay. And, but we asked Cowles, and I mean, Cowles yeah. has one third ownership of it. So there you go. Yeah. So that money's gone. But, yeah. but that's your answer to where some of the capital, how the capital expenses have been paid up and down. Yeah. yeah. Seth, I think the last part of it was fixing that section of asphalt. Yeah. That, finished the, that was the last finished time. That was the last one. That was two years ago. Yeah. And rubber flooring in the maze. That was part of that last day yeah. of money too. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm penciling twenty five hundred. The number yeah. that that we yeah. hopefully can all agree on. Yeah. Do yeah. you want to make an amount that's more divisible by one third two three? Oh, <laughs> sure. Three thousand. Three thousand. Okay. There you go. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. yeah. Fifteen hundred. <laughs> 2501. I want him to work first. We're going up. Not down. You want to go up? No, he wants no, no. to go up. I'm going up. He's yeah. going down. <laughs> okay. So, what's the agreed right. count on our Let's not put a dollar. No, nothing's on. agreed upon. Yeah. Well, should I put 25? Should I put 50? Let's not put that later. Add that later. Yeah. Paul said. 15. <laughs> Don't forget, this is going to have to get put into our budget. That item, whatever we do, it will have to be added to our budget. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. But it could happen multiple times. Five thousand. Go to five. Oh. You want to add five more thousand? In? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, so um, then the uh, next thing was on the capital, capital expenses that the. Uh, 
we incur for the value of the public number? Oh, sorry, nine. Other EMFD earnings. Um, we've been at 20,000 for as long as I can remember, and the 20,000 just doesn't cover it. Mm -hmm. you know, one set of turnout gear on close to, if I outfit one firefighter, it's close to five grand for boots, helmet, coat, jacket. Radios are pushing almost $2,000. Computers, you know. So you're saying you want to spend more than that without our approval? Yes, right. We'd like so to go up to 50000 That's what That's too much. What's that? From 20000 to 50000 Oh, what? Oh, oh, compromise. He's a big spender. 40, 40, He's 000. a big spender. 40,000. Holy shit, that's double. It's not that bad. No. This is 10 years old. You just heard the basic thing. Okay. What, what Albert was saying, I don't know if everybody not, really right. picked up on what he was saying, is, I heard it. is we have a lot of new regulations coming in on, on, on OSHA. Our gear, our gear is getting old, and that may not meet the new, new requirement and outfit me with a with a new helmet coat just pants you know it's a minimum fifteen fifteen hundred dollars just for one person that's not the five grand five, five grand, grand. Five, five, grand. grand. Five, five grand, grand. Yeah, yeah, so, right, so right there it's you know one person is one person so we, we're gonna have to go to you for permission for about everything that's not bad idea <laughs> so okay so you want to up that we want to up that. Okay. it's dangerous though what's that upping it because i don't know what you're gonna buy but what can I, when you think about what can i buy i'm gonna go out and buy a mercedes chief so you know i can't buy that for 50 grand i mean there's when you think about it what can you buy with 50 grand anymore today really Fifty is way too much. Do you need a higher account balance in the contingency fund too? No, no, no. That, that I really they haven't used it very much. Yeah, it, I it, try if, as hard as I sometimes feel like I shouldn't, but I really try and stick within my budget, and I try not to go over budget and just say, oh, I got four forty grand of free money, Plus I, I can spend. You know, so I try and stay within the budget as much as I can, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, I don't like yeah. saying, "Oh, I spent, I went forty thousand over budget the fire chief." It's a control thing, you know, and so. Mm -hmm. you know. And that's the same with the expenditures for that select board approval. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a way to monitor. It. It's a way to throttle down yeah. the expenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not mean saying it drives yeah. away. It's I do it the same thing in my farm. So I'm only going to spend a certain amount of money, you know. Even though it seems impossible, you manage to meet those goals. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what about thirty thousand on the without select board? Approval? I would, I 50. would take thirty. Forty, yeah. we'll split it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll split it. You're a horse trader. <laughs> we'll split it. Forty thousand. He's buying. We'll split the difference between fifty. Double. Yeah. Thirty. Forty. <laughs> no way. Thirty thousand. Not really. It's not that. No, it really. We, we, could, we could easily hit 30,000. We'll be asking again. Okay. Um, so it's only on a single expenditure. You could, you could. No, 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 it's no, not. No, it's for the year. It's for the year. It's for the year. Oh, so you add them all up. And it's, so yeah. we're not going to. Yeah. You think we're going to go buy vehicles? It's not for Yeah. So. <laughs> no, it's for the year. That, no, uh, at I, I one was, point, I thought it was a single item. I'm like, oh, this is good. That's what I thought. But no, it's per year. So in per theory, per it's good. I went over that by six thousand and change right. this year. And I didn't give pre permission. But and there again, part of it Are is you because sure it's any capital it says, is right in the bottom. Sure, it doesn't say plural. No, it says fiscal right year. Right on any one fiscal year. Last line. Just read the other twenty thousand set. It says in a fiscal year. So maybe we so, so Seth, you're under the wrong impression, so I'm going back to fifty. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, maybe we can meet Seth's needs by and yours by increasing the total, but saying that any one expense. exactly that's what I think we should do. Limited to twenty or something. Yeah. That's so if we had multiple 
That's what the town does. Hold on. So if they buy four, if they buy five separate pieces of turnout gear at five thousand dollars a piece, then it doesn't trigger it. Right. But if they say we're buying turnout gear, it's twenty five thousand, then it does trigger it. That's what it sounds like. That that's no. That's not the way it is now. Right now, as long as it's over yeah. twenty thousand total for the year, it triggers. That's it not a good way to set it up. Actually, I don't like that. So we can spend multiple through the year multiple items. Here we can spend as much as we want. No thousand. No, there, there would have to be caps. Like you you got to have, you gotta have caps. <laughs> no, you, either way, you got to have caps. You're taking money out of your own capital reserve, yeah. so you're shooting yourself in the foot. Right. I mean, there's, there's shooting, no, theory. we're not shooting ourselves in the foot. We're using them for things we need. Yeah, right. yeah, but you've already said you need to buy a truck, you need well, to do this, you do that. Well, you're going to use it all by uniform? I mean, that's... Uh, mm -hmm. Turn out here. Turn out here. It says you got to do something with the what I mean? says. It's like... Either way, there's got to be a cap, whether it's... Yeah, yeah. I got an, it. an annual allocation of this amount of money, or you can spend up to this amount without. But if you buy a single item over a certain amount, you still get, you have to get permission. And I, and and I agree with both of those being in there. Where I you know you're right. I can buy if I buy sets of turnout gear individually a month apart. Right. That's twelve sets of turnout gear, roughly five grand. Right. Oh, 60, but I'm under the radar because right. it didn't go over twenty thousand. Right. Yeah. Right. So there's got to be thresholds on any side of that, either way. I know, but you have a control. You're spending yeah. your own capital reserve on ten sets of turnout gear. Yeah. Well, you won't get the new truck next year because you just spent all the money. Right. True. So should there be any cap? <laughs> there should be. Yeah, yeah, there should be. Some <laughs> <point. laughs> all right, let's go. No, wait a minute. This. This is really not a difficult thing here, guys. We gotta come up with something. We're not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Right. But what I'm hearing Seth saying, what he, his his ideas are, we can buy multiple sets of gear. It could come up to for the whole year, yeah. spread it out on different purchases, seventy-five thousand dollars. We don't need permission. That right. It kind of makes sense, but it doesn't right. make sense because people like <laughs> right. control you more than that. <laughs> I don't. Like, you know what? That's just shooting. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, well, you spend a lot of money on turnout gear. Okay, but I guess we're just using as an as example. No, I get it. Yeah, but you're saying we don't need permission for that. No, no, we haven't decided yet. Yeah. Well, we're just does. we're just we're just flapping our gums and trying to come up with yes. some, something. Okay, Tom. <laughs> Tom. How about if we put a cap? Forty thousand dollars, to me, is reasonable. Put some controls in place. And every, and what about single items? Uh, forty thousand. Forty thousand. Period. No, if you want to go out and spend forty thousand dollars for um, new something new for your truck, you don't have to talk to us. Thirty-nine thousand nine hundred bucks. No, what I'm saying, it just like it says now, Two in months. fiscal year. Cumulatively, and, and, and you can put that if, if a single item in that same paragraph, if a single item exceeds twenty thousand or more, you need you, yeah you you require permission of both select boards. I think so. And then cumulative cumulatively you can 40, sure. and fine. that's fine. Fine, fine. That works. So that's fine but for me. I think. Yeah. It's something we're going to talk about. Yeah. We're not going to make a decision yeah. tonight. Right. We can run it yeah, by I, mean, I think that's sure. so appropriate to have way to them. explain it. Yeah. Is if we we can spend up to forty thousand cumulatively for the year Correct. without without permission. Yeah. Correct. If we need something more than that, we need to come to you for permission. Or if an, or if an, or if an items over twenty k. Over, over twenty thousand. For one single item. For a single item. One single item. I think right. you should. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we so we're gonna up yeah. we're gonna up it to forty. Yeah. Right. And then anything that we that comes to twenty thousand or more as a single item, as a single single item. Yeah. purchase. Kind of like so, so anything under twenty, we don't need permission. Anything right. over twenty, right. but right. we can spend forty thousand for yeah. all the budget yeah. small stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Or however you want to write. I think that. that's fine. Good job. I think that's good. I like that. Put that in the system. <clears throat> and, and the way I treat that, just so you guys know, if I ask for permission to get something, I I, I deduct that from that forty thousand. Is how I've done it in the past. Oh, so, for the single item, right? So sure, you know because yeah. I don't should. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because then you're locking yourself into forty thousand, right. right. which I don't think we should. 
Because you, 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 you may, what I'm saying, what I just that, said that is that example. over, we need something over the, if we've reached the 40,000, yeah. okay, and we need something uh, we for 10,000, we need we, permission. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Ask. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take you a while to get to the 40,000 anyway. Oh, I, can, I don't I think so. Quick. I know you can. <laughs> I know you can. But we have to have a little control over the situation. You have machinery set. You can't say that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's I mean, we it's know it's hurting hurt. now, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know that before. <laughs> we know it. We know it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, that, and that the other thing was on 13, just I know that somebody's Again, got patient. sloppy. Yeah. EN. Yeah. It's throughout the whole document. It's everywhere. Yeah. It is. It's yes, everywhere. It is. Yeah. Oh, I, I, it's, it's half the time it's, EMDF and half the oh, time EMDF. Oh, oh, okay. It's in the first That's paragraph. I, I was just going to say it's in the yeah, first paragraph. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't realize how many times it yeah. did change. Oh, so somebody just needs it to does for that paragraph, it certainly. Yeah. A lot of times. So yeah, wherever that goes, it just type yeah. those yeah. everywhere. The next paragraph. Those were truthfully, my notes are only. Um, issues that we wanted to raise the money towards capital that we can pay or use. Um, yep. Just making sure it's a five-year contract. I know that wasn't that was left out for us to just pencil in. I guess on a meeting like tonight, but um, and okay. then addressing the capital expenses for the building. Well, I think we've worked that out. Yeah. I like the idea of the dollar amount. Then there's no argument. Okay. And we want to move forward, and I have arguments that we're trying to give us a bill. Right. Um, so if, yeah. if we if you look at 16 yep. EM, EM FD assets, um, this is a piece of paper that exists right now. I mean, this 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 list is going to change. Yeah. You know, how do we uh, the language we put in there to say? The list will be updated once a year or something like that. So, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a living thing. And I believe a couple of meetings ago, we talked about some other existing it's document in, to refer to. I don't remember what's in the first someone clause or something that needs to be presented. That is part of this. Is it? That's right. that list. Right. Yeah, like and the problem is that, that we don't want to have to amend this interlocal agreement every time the equipment changes. Exactly. Well, right. But if you take his suggestion and then the list of equipment, uh, the appendix will be uh, adjusted annually. That takes care of that problem. Yeah. So we just need some language in there. That, so it'll uh, be adjusted annually. Yeah. Is, is there no independent list of equipment that the fire department has that we could refer it's to? Right here. Did you give right it there. To you gave it to I do, but that's part of the contract. I mean, is there a, outside of the interlocal agreement, does the fire department have a list of this equipment that we could just refer? Uh, we gave oh, them. I see what you're saying. So it just automatically gets updated, updated. as the fire, right. fire department buys a new engine. Yeah, so it's and, and not in the agreement. Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. Should, should, yeah, should right. Right. So, so maybe, maybe on number five, it, it, it should be G. Add a G there, which is you know a list of the uh, burn of the equipment. Yeah. Mm. That'd be a way to handle it. Yeah. Yeah, it's incorporated to F. Yes. And number five, you're right. Put a G in there, it could be the appendix of equipment stuff. It could be part of F2, you're right. It's either one. Yeah. It's just going to be part of the Yeah. We want to know what the So it doesn't tie your Exactly. Yeah. So we wanted to talk about the insurance part of that section. Is that? Uh, oh, sure. So, 14. Which is a new section, right? And um, the limits of one and two million, one million per occurrence, two in the aggregate. The, our passive broker advised looking at two and four. And the purpose of that is that if you had a claim that was larger than the one and the two, then the towns could be exposed to the rest of it because we carry our policies are larger. Ours is, I assume. Yeah, and I, I did not get a chance to reach out to my insurance, and I'm not sure where ours is. I think it's higher than that one million, two million. Oh, okay. Probably, but I well, that would be an easy change. I can't verify that. So okay. when I was chief, I know that it was a $2 million 
Yeah, so I just have to confirm those numbers. Okay. And then, then, we're, then we can change it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kari, what number was that? So that's uh, 14. 14. 14. Insurance. <clears throat> and so that, that 1 million would go to two, you're saying? Yeah, one, one per, two per occurrence and four in the aggregate. Right. And then the. And what about the business automobile liability? Also moving that to two. Okay. So then later in that paragraph, I'm just curious, it says if the fire department's not required by law to carry workers' comp insurance, is that the case? No, we don't. No, we have we got to be sure why that's Yeah, there. I would think so. Oh, so what, should we have that in there? Is that doing anything? I'm not really sure why it's... I don't know why I was well, there. To, I mean, it was just a few years ago that you discovered that you needed workers' comp, wasn't it? We've always no, had we've always always had had It was unemployment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're way back. It, it's a, we've always had workers' comp. Okay. Even yeah. for our part time guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our volunteers. Yeah. Even on volunteers, we have it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. It's a risky thing you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So, so who, who would who would be the one to draft the proposed language for those two items? Who does that? Eastmont Who's Field editing it, you mean? Yeah. I believe you you folks did this original draft. Right? Jim Sorry. Jim Barlow, Jim our Barlow. attorney, worked with us to, to do it, so we could run run all this through him again. So we made notes to You've been taking on. notes, it looks like Jim. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I I just want to point out that um, the reason we got here tonight is because Callis had proposed the amendment, which is um, 18, and that makes it possible for us to amend details in this agreement without canceling the whole agreement and starting over again. And so in the future, when we have discussions about the amount of liability insurance or you know, how much of a capital expenditure you need to come to us uh, yeah. for permission for and so on, then we we don't have to cancel the agreement right. and start all over. We can just do an amendment process. Yeah. So, yeah. so thank you, Callis, for for suggesting that way back when. Cool. And, and then you had that question about lease. Yeah. Did that ever? Because I was right. digging and looking, and I can't this, find. So in nineteen, I, I just noticed there's two nineteens, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> but the first nineteen, the last bullet is B, lease of a East Montpelier Emergency Service Facility, 2010. Anybody have that? What did you just say? Lowe's? Probably in our head. The lease, we probably have it. lease of the East Montpelier Emergency Services Facility dated September 2nd, 2010. I have does not explicitly supersede the following. I, okay, there. What page are you on? Coming? It's on the last page, page five. five. Oh, not the last page, but five. Five of eight. Five. And it's... Seven. It's right before the, it's in 19, but it's the first 19. Oh, okay. 19. At the end. Right before governing law. Um, we probably have, right? We said the East Montpelier. We've got a copy somewhere, I suppose. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we just yeah. take a look at that. Yeah. And then um, the other thing I was wondering about is the Templeton Station and how that all relates. And um, yeah, anyway. What about it? So I, w I was provided a, copy of a signed MOU, it's an unsigned MOU between East Montpelier and the fire department. Mm -hmm. And so this, was that signed? I mean, what, what is the agreement on that? I guess, I guess, put it this way. Well, who owns it? I mean, that's a little controversial. If there's a repair <laughs> or sure an expenditure needed on that building, <laughs> who's paying for it? Uh, it's close to the Dallas. town has. <laughs> <laughs> no, the town's paid for the stuff that we've done to that building. Town has. Yeah. So it seems like that should be one of the one of the governing the documents. Is when you re retrofitted it for the greater. Yeah. I know, other I other than that. No. Well, what about the septic problems that we've had there? The fire department paid those. Never been never fixed. Been fixed. It's never been fixed. We don't. There isn't a septic. <laughs> yeah. No. Why we got yeah. shut off or whatever. You shut the water off. And you pay for the utilities. One addition was built by the first one was built by the volunteers in 1960. The second one was built by the volunteers in 1987. And then the last one was, um, we put that addition on the back with Earl Smith. That was after that. Right. 
And the only change is stuff is when we got when when we put the grater in, we had to she had to change the doors and the stuff in the front. Yeah, I had that to done. get that come in. Right. That's the only thing. That's the only thing the town was paid for. To put out the building. Yeah, the problem is it's on town-owned land, uh -huh. yeah. and there's been MOUs back and forth about the whole thing. Well, so. It was deeded to the town for the sole purpose of putting a fire station. Yeah, but then volunteers built it. So, so yeah. what's the question? He doesn't know. Well, if there's an, how does it fit into our capital planning and uh, you know the, that whole discussion about repairs, unplanned repairs and right emer yeah. emergency expenditures? It's probably going to be the same thing. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. anything over twenty twenty thousand. Well, I mean, well, that might be fine, but it seems like it should be re referred to. Like, if there is an MOU, it, it ought to be in this list. There's some MOUs that flown back and forth. And when Bruce was doing it, it said the town owns it. But I understand that's a shaky territory. So, should it be mentioned in here? John, for repair purposes? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 mean, we I, could, I, I truly don't know where it sits because. Of, I've heard different stories depending yeah. on who you talk to. Right. And so I don't know where that building officially sits. You know, uh, I, I hear how we built it, but it, it is. Your dad volunteers it. built this on town land. That's all I can say. And, and, but the town's the expenses understand. of the building, if they're operating, are split, you know, two thirds, one third between yeah. both of you folks. Yeah. Capital wise, um, we haven't done, we that. Haven't we done, done a done darn that. thing. But, you know, would it be nice to have a bathroom up there again? Sure would. Mm -hmm. but, um, no, but no, nobody wants to spend twenty five, thirty thousand dollars for a septic system for a bathroom. Yeah, yeah but the thing is, you could just get the pump, the uh, tank pumped. That's once a year. True. That's why I didn't understand why it got shut off. It's like just get the tank pump once a year. Once yeah, a year. And the problem is, tree roots are the impact of the pipe under the floor. Oh. Somewhere between the tank and the toilet. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that, and then that became a issue. It turned into more costly kind of repair. Rotor -rotor. I think yeah. the, the septic tank is really uh, part, of, part of the drainage. <laughs> uh, Look at that ditch. Well, room nobody knows the tank. Well, the tank is right next to the. It's, addition. It's yeah. half underneath. It's half underneath, but it's, 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 it's in that swale. We, we had to build a part of the river section. It's part of the, the part of the drainage ditch. Oh. That's why it's full of mud, it's full of dirt. Anyway, because of that ditch. Thank you, you drop it. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All about right. transparency. Well, you could include it in the, you know, I don't know, in the, in the capital expense repair or whatever we're doing. I don't think it's a good place to stall the interlocal agreement with that with that item. I, I think we, that's going to be dealt separately. There's too much involved. Uh, ownership and deeds and two thirds, one third, and uh, I don't know. That's to me, that's a big item. Well, you guys have been paying two thirds, one third on the heating oil and the power bill. Right. right. So. Yeah. So John, what is, go on. What's that? John Winston and I went through all the titles on it, and it is the property is owned by the town of East Mount Yeah. We did that right in your office there at the town clerk's office. Yeah. So I, I would like to move move on with the inner local. Yeah. But leave that item for another day. Yeah. I, I think we can solve that off. <coughs> well, I think that you, there should be. I mean, I think that it's been a pretty good conversation in general about all of these different documents. The land use one is going to uh, come up uh, in, in 2029. And I think that's going to kind of fundamentally change how we're thinking about all of this because we're going to be talking about buildings and multiple buildings and everything. And we're going to have to have an agreement about how we, how we fund this entity that we share. Right, so we should probably have a dedicated conversation about just how we want those agreements to look and how we want to fund this thing that supports our communities. So, 
I'm not I'm not looking to put it on an agenda anytime soon. But, right. uh, but it would be nice to just yeah. say, you know, in the next couple of years, mm -hmm. right, not not to make changes to anything, but to have a have a good conversation about what it looks like at the end of these various agreements as we start to coalesce how we're how we're supporting the entity. Well that that part of the whole network of buildings is gonna have to be dealt with. Yeah. In a separate conversation. For sure. Yeah. So anyway. Um, to your point about the repairs. Yeah. Treat it the same. I guess so. It's just yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean because if it gets to something really expensive up there, we'll definitely have a conversation. Yeah. You know, that's just the way it's gonna have to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everyone knows it. They're like, well, you know, what do we want to do about the septic system? And we have to sit down and hammer it out. But I, I think for the repairs that, that could come up, if it is over the 3,000, then the town would be responsible for that bill. So we could include it in that, as far as that goes, if we want to put it somewhere in there. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a bad point. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, it may I, come I, up. I do know one thing that might come up on that building that will need to be addressed probably sooner or later is the front door. It's an old metal door. It's starting to rust. It's yeah. sagging. Yeah. Sometimes we can't open it and get inside. Yeah. <clears throat> And it just it's worn out. So Sounds that's like a, a repair. That's a, that's a repair. <laughs> <laughs> that's a repair you might yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, hey, hey, building expense. expense. <laughs> We're gonna incur a building expense. We got the combination pulled in the back thirty years on that building too. Okay. Right. So, Let's not get into that. <laughs> We're good. We're good. And so from so, last time to since you guys wrote the interloper, you don't have any edits or changes. You just heard from us to So yeah, my question is uh, who presented this? This Jim, was Jim Barrow. Jim, 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 Jim Barrow, yeah. Yeah, that who's was that. Who's he with? He's a lawyer. He's attorney. He's 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 so, do you guys want to go through this? All, all these little things on the side and tell us what they're for? That's his and That's his, yeah. about where the, the language came from. Of, yeah. How he came up with the yeah. inner law. Oh. So, that's not that's oh. not part of the agreement. That's his explanation of oh. what he did. Okay. Those are his comments. Okay. That's his explanation. So, so those are his letters, his initials. So, so will you ask him to produce a clean copy? Yeah. Plug, plug in the five year. Yeah. I think that's a. You can plug in the other other number too. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll discuss it. And we'll try to get the lease dated September second, twenty ten. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. So I think that's the only thing that we And then we'll have to have another meeting, I guess, to blah blah about it all. Make sure everything just looks like. Yeah. What we agreed? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Once, once we, we have I, I would think yeah. once we have the edited copies, the three organizations could individually send it, read it, review it, it approve it, and then yeah. get together and right. sign off. Yeah. If, if we agree on it when we get together, right. the individual yeah. organizations. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I, don't, I don't think we have to officially meet as a trio again as long as all the edits. Are reflected as we recall, and we all approve. And the last thing is capital plan update. Um, and I'm I don't have a new capital plan yet, but I'm just kind of cracking the door open and putting my foot through it, and even my whole body. Um, our utility vehicle, which is our pickup truck outside, um, that is experiencing severe body rot within the Frame. some of the cab the fenders right. and the back body to the point now that we can't open up the slide out tray and given the multi uses that that truck performs it as a just a plain old simple pickup truck it's really not effective or efficient for our needs today not to say that we can't use a pickup truck too but we're in the thought processes right now of what, what changes or improvements to that pickup truck that will work best moving forward. And then the other item would be our ambulance. Our oldest ambulance, which is a 2010, 
spends almost more time in the service bays than it does in our ambulance bays. And it's starting to develop you know, repair issues. It's going on 15 years old now. And we're looking at what is going to be our next best option for another ambulance to replace that. That's the one you I use from Wilson. I believe yes. so. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And so that's going to be. And part of the problem, too, is most of the lead times we're hearing from organizations, they're giving us two to three years out. Unless we can find something we feel is good that's used that somebody else is getting rid of. Uh, but anything, whether we refurb this one or try and get a new one, you're looking at two or three years out. And that's why I probably have this discussion with you maybe in, in a year or two if I knew I could get something within six months to a year. But if we're talking two or three years out, and might get lucky and get one in a year. I, you know, I want to start those discussions sooner than later for another ambulance. And then pick up, what are you thinking about that? A different kind of vehicle? Something with like a uh, utility body type with cabinet doors that would open up where we can access stuff. Because that tray with all the stuff that's on it, when it's loaded, and if you're on level ground, it's not so bad. But if the truck's facing downhill, good luck pulling it out. And if the truck is facing uphill, good luck when you release it and it decides to... Well, so that is a pull-out tray and a pickup body or something? Yeah, and all the different stuff is laid yeah. out in it. But it, it, it's, it's very heavy when it's loaded with all the equipment we carry. And then sometimes, like, when you need signs, you got to pull the whole thing out, rummage through some stuff to get up front to get the brackets for the signs. Versus if we had a compartment and all the signs were in that one, all our forestry equipment was in another compartment, and you know, so on. So, so you get a cabin chassis and a utility body or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's what we're thinking right now. That's what year is that truck? The pickup? Two two thousand fourteen or eleven? Eleven. Eleven. Okay. That's all I have. Well, that's all. <laughs> you want me to go on board? It's early. Let's no. go. <laughs> we can make the discussion go on for hours. Yes. But no. You get Veronica to talk training for hours. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Hey, you, we training? can talk about the other. Would you like to do a training for hours? hours? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm going to get the vacuum cleaner out. <laughs> Did everybody sign the attendance sheet? I didn't. I got it. I didn't. Do you know where, does anyone right know where it is? Right no, right 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 right. Thanks. Okay. You want to stop that thing? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, they haven't adjourned the meeting. Yeah. 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 Go for eight forty-five. Right? Yeah. That's how it works. So we're going to adjourn. Paul, you didn't sign it? <laughs> no. Okay. okay. Oh, they didn't make a motion. They just adjourned. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh,